All right, let's get started with 3, 5, 1 to 1, and inverse functions. So, what are we going to do in this section? Well, we're going to talk about 1 to 1 functions, and we're going to talk about inverse functions. For this one, we're going to go ahead and skip verifying that two, inverses, uh, two functions are inverses of each other. All right, two big things from our summary here. When we find the inverse, what that means is that you're going to switch x and y. So when you switch x and y, you switch the domain and the range. So the domain of one function is the range of its inverse. All right, and then what is a one-to-one -one function? A one-to-one -one function where is where every x has one and only one y it matches up with it. All right, so if we see in this instance, for these three relations, let's see if they're functions, and if they are, whether they're one-to-one. -one. So for this first one, f, this is not a function. The reason why this is not a function is that an x value of 1 maps to two different y values. One turns into 1, and 1 also turns into negative 1, so not a function. For g, g is a function. There are no repeats in the x values. They're all unique x values. But it is not one-to-one. -one. The reason why it's not one-to-one -one is that negative one turned into one, and one also turned into one. So you need to have unique values for the y values as well for it to be one-to-one, -one, which makes h a one-to-one -one function. If you notice, there are no repeats in the x, and there are no repeats in the y values. All right, so graphically, what does this look like? This means it passes the horizontal line test. So we have seen the vertical line test before. The vertical line test must be passed to be a function. Must be passed to be a function. So in this case, the relation that I just drew is not a function because it would not line test two points on one vertical line. So how about something like this, y equals squared. So this is a function, as a vertical line, but it is not, however, a one-to-one -one function, because if we drew a horizontal line, it would touch in two places. So let's take a look at this graphically. x equals y squared looks like this. So this is not a function. y equals x squared looks like this. So this is a function. It passes the vertical line test, but not one-to-one -one because it does not pass the horizontal line test. y equals x cubed, the last one, is a graph that looks like that. And it passes both the vertical and the horizontal line test, so it is a one-to-one -one function. All right, so how do we graph the inverse of a function? So if we have a function, to get its inverse, we, again, switch x and y values. So I see a 0, 2 right here. The inverse function is going to have a point at 2, 0. I see negative 2, 0, then we're going to have 0, negative 2. If we plot out y equals x, the diagonal line. The inverse will be reflected along that line. So we'll have another point here, right where it crosses. And instead of going straight down, we'll be going straight across. We'll come through here, and that will be our inverse function. So x's switches switch with y's. So see if you can do it. Give it a shot here. See if you can map this out. All right, so let's see if we can get a couple of matched points. I see 2, 0, so 0, 2. I see 0, 5, so how about 5, 0? We'll match right there. And then I also see a point down here, right here. This is at 4, comma, negative 1, 2, 3. So this is going to be negative 3, comma, 4. See a point right there. All right, so we're going to be coming in, and we can see that 2 comma 0 is the point where it switches. So 0 comma 2 would be the point where we go in a new direction as well. Going off like that. 
Okay, find the inverse of this function, and we're going to do this uh, algebraically. So we're going to switch x and y. So f of x is the same as writing y, so y equals the square root of x plus 2. So if we switch this, we're going to write x equals the square root of y plus 2. And we're going to solve for y, so get y by itself. So switch x and y first, and then solve for y. So how would we do this? We could square both sides, and that would give us x squared equals y plus 2. And then we'll subtract 2 from both sides, and we'd get x squared minus 2 equals y. So y equals x squared minus 2 is your inverse function. Okay, let's find the domain and the range of both of these. So when we looked at the original function, the square root of x plus 2, we should know at this point that x plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0 because it's under the square root. So x must be greater than or equal to negative 2. We make a little chart here. We've got the function, and we've got the inverse of the function, the domain and the range. So the function, uh, sorry, the domain of the original function is x is greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, we just figured out that the range of the inverse is y must be greater than or equal to negative 2. Because to go from a function to its inverse, you just switch x and y. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, inverse function. So our inverse function is what we solved here, x minus 2. What is the domain of this? The domain of that would be all real numbers because there's no square roots and there's no denominators. So what's the range of the original function? All real numbers. All right, see if you can do it for these two. Find the inverse and then find the domain and range. Okay, to switch this, we would say y equals 7x minus 3. Switch on x equals 7y minus 3. Add 3, x plus 3 equals 7y. And divide by 7. So y equals x plus 3 over 7. So if we make our chart, the original and the inverse. Domain and range. So the domain of the original is all real numbers, which makes the domain of the, ra the range of the inverse all real. And the domain of the inverse is also all real. And so the range of the original is also all real. Let's figure out this one. So we're going to say, let's go ahead and switch it right away. x equals the square root of y minus 1. So x squared, square both sides, equals y minus 1. So if we add 1 to both sides, y equals x squared plus 1. Make our chart. So the domain of the original is x minus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. So x must be greater than or equal to 1, which is the range of the second. Remember to switch it to y, and y must be greater than or equal to 1. And x squared plus 1, your domain is going to be all real numbers. So your range of the original would also be all real. Okay. Just one thing to be uh, mindful of here, if you do not pass the horizontal line test, you are not one-to-one, -one, so you do not have an inverse, right? There is no inverse if you are not one-to-one. -one. Okay, last example here, let's try to find the inverse of this. So let's switch our x and y, so x equals two over y plus three. All right, how are we gonna get out of this? We're gonna need to multiply both sides by the denominator, y plus three and y plus three. So then we're going to have y plus 3 times x, I'm going to leave this in parentheses, equals 2, because those cancel. Let's divide x on both sides. We're going to get y plus 3 equals 2 over x. We're going to subtract 3. So we're going to get y equals 2 over x minus 3. We need a common denominator here, so let's make it 3x over x. We're going to get y equals 2 minus 3x over x. That's your final. Okay? So if we were talking about the domain and range on this one, it doesn't ask for it, but let's just do it to make sure we can. Oops, I need to the range on this one. So the domain of the original would be x does not equal negative 3 because of that. So we're going to say for the range, y does not equal negative 3. And note that they said that here, right? so that it could be a one-to-one -one function. What about the inverse? For this one, we would say x does not equal zero. So y is zero. 
All right, your turn. We'll wrap this one up, and we are done for this lesson. Okay, so we're going to say x equals 4 over y minus 1. Let's multiply both sides by y minus 1. y minus 1 times x equals 4. Let's divide both sides by x. y minus 1, 4 over x. And we'll add 1 to both sides. We'll have y equals 4 over x plus 1x over x. So y equals 4 plus x over x. All right, good job.